Beauregard Lionette, a disaster lesbian, a badass monk, sometimes the other way around, depends on the episode. I'll be honest, at first I did not like Beau. She ticked me off, she seemed annoying, and in a way almost like a challenge for the DM. But she grew on me. So what changed, and where did she start? Her attitude towards other people can be summed up to do whatever you want, but if it fucks with my shit, we're going to have an issue. This aggressive attitude, along with her general dislike of authority, put her at odds with her superiors in the Cobalt Soul. She's straightforward, she doesn't take shit. At the start of an underdog journey with the goal of uprooting corruption, I missed like a few words in this sentence, let's start off. And she started off as an underdog with the goal of uprooting corruption anywhere she'd find it. Bo is an outlaw, this archetype is mad as hell. In the face of an unjust society, they are the ones with the will to overthrow the status quo. And towards the end of season 2, we saw the result of that with Bo's epilogue. Their strengths, resourcefulness, perseverance. They're not afraid to work outside the law. Weaknesses. They're small in power, status, and resources. They usually work alone. At the start, Bo was an underdog, as well as the party. That's the nature of D&D. Moving around, going against the rules, authorities being standoffish and rude. However, with time, Beauregard shifted to a more passionate person. She was the f first one to consider the Mighty Nine her friends and family, and rather than being a single soldier, she now listens to others and reconsiders. Her being appointed to Expositor, a higher rank in the Cobalt Soul, lessened her hate for authority, perhaps showing that not all high-ranking individuals are corrupt. And that's it. That's the point of it. All good characters change. Her relationships tell a similar story and act as another prism to her personality. So what happened? I guess I wasn't ready to say goodbye to my family. Good. Neither were we. Now what I'm picking up on is just a genuine moment of friendship and respect. And now I'm feeling like you wish I would stop analyzing you because I'm ruining the moment. Being the only two Empire-born human citizens in the Mighty Nine, Caleb and Bo have a rather unique friendship among the group, being labeled as Empire Kids. Initially, they were at odds with each other, seeing as Caleb tended to keep secrets to himself. The two of them finally came to a true understanding when they finally admitted that they see each other as friends, and that they both want what's best for the Empire and Kryn Dynasty. Ever since the moment, Bo and Caleb's platonic, sibling-like relationship has undergone profound personal growth. Caleb has even gone as far to refer to Bo as his partner in making things right back at home. Bo and Ford seem to have already established some trust and rapport as both are laid back, though Ford tends towards being charming, while Bo, uh, she's blunt and outspoken, to say the least. They seem to be the go-getters of the group when it comes to making contacts and steering the direction of the Mighty Nine. Ford also coaches Bo in improve, <laughs> improving her social skills. He means so much and has been so stressful and went so well. Seriously, look at me, I cannot stop smiling. How do people do this with their faces? Ford and Bo further bonded over managing the Ball Eater, after Bo became his first mate in the stowaway. Mm. What the hell? Mm. Careful. The ink's still wet. I don't really need to say anything here. They're great for each other. Yasha and Bo work as foils and bring out what's best in each other when they're not trying to kill each other. On the other hand, Bo has had an antagonistic relationship with her father. Though he trained her to take over the family business, she described herself as a disappointment to him. And they often fought, but was desperate for attention from her parents, so she stole her father's wine and sold it on the black market. After her eventual arrest for criminal activities, her father bailed her out of jail, then bailed the cobalt soul to take her away. That later was revealed to be an illegal bribe for the order to take and train Bo. This being her defining moment seemed to be right to finish on. To conclude, with Beauregard uprooting the corruption in the same order she worked for and rose in the ranks, finally arriving at a position of power where she's changing the status quo from the inside rather than from the outside. She fulfilled her ultimate goal as an outlaw, as the archetype. She gained freedom and she gained justice. 
You know, after using all these Brooklyn Nine-Nine clips, it dawned on me, they call themselves the Nine-Nine. Like the fucking Mighty Nine. 